Hi guys, welcome back to Chit Chat News and Views, the Today Show for tomorrow. I'm Rebecca and I'm going to be your host for this fantastic segment today. Uh, today we got a lot of features. We're doing a Garport Gossip. We're doing a Canadian Corner. We're having a resident expert chef. We're also going to have the family pet of the day, the family picture of the day, and a couple of few extras. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, and we got a special gift for you. We got Donna Fisher. She's going to be in our little craft shop. Everything in there is made from scratch. And she will also be telling... Hi, my name is Donna Fisher. Deb Van Murek and I are now in charge of the gift shop at Shalimar, which is located on the first floor of the clubhouse. Our gift shop is open Monday through Saturday from 10 to 1, and on market days from 9 to 1. We want to emphasize that everything you see is handmade by someone who lives in Shalimar. We're very, very proud of the talent of the people that we have. We also uh, let our vendors bring new items in every Saturday morning from 10 to 1 and again on market days from 9 to 1. And our craft group is also very proud of our twice a year craft fairs. Our spring fair will be on March 16th and all proceeds go to our three charities. Crafts are done every Thursday at one o'clock in the craft room, also located on the first floor next to the gift shop. And there is a list of all of those on the front door of the gift shop. Uh, the ladies also get together on Thursdays at 11.30 in the Caddy Shack for lunch and then proceed over to the classes. So please feel free to come and join us. Everything is amazingly talented and, and wonderful. Um, and just an aside, cash only. Please come and visit us, thanks. Hey friends, we're here at Pam Hall's house and we're gonna go inside and see who the pet is of the month. We're gonna go with Pam Hall, who is the resident pet groomer. She is also the resident pet expert. So let's go inside and see who the pet is this month. Hi, I'm Pam Hall. I'm kind of the resident groomer here in Shalimar Creek. I currently groom over 50 dogs, but these three munchkins are mine. The white one is Millie. Everybody knows who she is. And Tyler is the middle one. He's a Shorty, Shih Tzu Yorkie mix. And this is Charlie. He's my good boy. The other two, not so much. Millie came from Haines City. Uh, she was uh, she was an oopsie, but she's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Tyler was a rescue, and Charlie came from uh, uh, Oldsmar from a breeder. Charlie is eight years old. Tyler is eleven, and Millie is five. Millie pretty much runs the house and everything else around her. They all get along very well. They're happy babies, and they all are the love of my life. Well, thank you, Pam, for that. And Pam Hall will be back next month with our Pet of the Month. Now, on to Carport Gossip. That's right, Carport Gossip with Morty, a resident favorite. Morty and friends are going to feature some of their things. Let's hear them. What? He knew who does all the talking. Oh, does he? Puts the mics in front of all the people that do all the talking. But who's doing all the talking right now? What? I have over there, but now. You can do more talking with your expression than anybody I know. He does have a point. How's the food there, Mark? I'll tell you. You're going to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to tell right you. Right down now. No. Breakfast, we... Yeah. Did you see oh, that? I'm supposed to know that anyway. Well, that like yesterday, uh, I had an omelet, which was ham, I think, I think a lot of people cheese, and, uh, 
Megan's going to be here while she's away. She's going to be working? Here. No, she's starting a new job, so really? she's off for a week and a half. Really? Starting a new job? Yeah, she's got a different company. Ooh, you making this money? <laughs> <laughs> you looking good. Oh, I thought big you were talking to me. Big no, big, 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 I got... I'm not going to say You're yeah. yeah. surrounded yeah. by yeah. dicks. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's all right, New York. <laughs> I thought it from no, the we'll have any <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I should say the right more often. You can never have too many. <laughs> I said it. You know. Right, Dick? <laughs> well, we can keep going, but what's not? Why not? You'll be immortalized. We, we, were, we were warned no cussing, so we did. Oh, well, that's not cussing. Yeah. That's not cussing. No, but it's a precursor. <laughs> you know what I would normally say in a case. I do. <laughs> that's a pretty big word for him. Three curves? Three curves? Oh, yeah. 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 They pulled that one right out. <laughs> <laughs> He's it's me so the smell. That's unusual. Well, did you look at those? Did you look at the flag? I want to do the Jersey Boys. I saw them in an intimate theater downtown Can I see it? Chicago. Oh, really? 300 people. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. You want to talk to me? I got to Who's the Obviously, the oldest guy of our breakfast club is there. Oh, right. Who's the youngest? Right there. Oh, right, right there. How old are you? <laughs> and, yeah, but you're younger than me. I'm fine. Yeah. I just got to know. Oh, 
How old are you? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 Donna. Donna, me. No. Dogs don't get people food. Do we slip once in a while? Sure, we do. You gotta keep the damn chihuahua on the table. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh oh, I said damn. <laughs> Don't let it. You know what? I think that. I think that. We think that Mona should bring you here every Saturday. To breakfast? Yeah. Megan will bring him a cup of See, Megan can come to breakfast without I, I'm sure she can. <laughs> yeah. By the way, you just read my mind. <laughs> See, I, I think I've already talked about this. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wasn't she wasn't happy with the direction? They were, she wasn't happy with the direction the company was going in. It's not like when you work and you stay with someone for 30, 40 years. Very few people do that. Yes. She had no trouble finding out. Yeah. 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 I quit a couple of jobs with nothing in front of me. Although I feel like if I became disillusioned, that was it. I, I was just okay. <laughs> What? You, I you lost did? my impotence? Yeah. Well, we <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You lost that one. <laughs> <time. laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, 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 impotence. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lost that too. Yeah. 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 A sort of word. Yes. So what? I, I, I have a question for this morning. Don't, don't go to the oh God. God. That was so disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> we have to do that. I was working at some restaurant and there was a bowl of food that really looked appetizing. And it was called menudo. I didn't know what menudo was, so I looked up the restaurant and the main ingredient is tripe. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> And I thought it was a fish. That's a snow. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Right. And it stopped me dead. <laughs> oh, no. White people. Lots of holes. Yeah. Oh, you know, it's not white people. It's not white people. No, they stain it. Yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. Judge. So disappointing. It looks so good. It tastes good. It ain't going to yeah. happen with me. <laughs> Yeah, I worked at a general store. And that was one of the things they sold behind the meat pot. Price land. Oh, yeah. yeah. And suet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, suet's important. It's a bird. It's a bird. Yeah. Bird. yeah. Suet's fat. It's oh, okay. fat. Oh. Hey, John? Yeah. Is that part of your organization? Very big. I can tell you. We can We can tell you. 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 We can tell you.
them sending me a, a message at 9.02 every morning saying they were continuing to look for it. They will not stop. Get home. But then you paid. Well, I had to pay $49 for, for them to track it. Oh, wow. The TSA. Yeah. Get home. The day I get home. The night I get home. Donna says, do me a favor. I can't let you take the laundry out of here. Oh, I put it in the car. Okay. Oh, and here's the damn key fob. But that was after that. Spare. In case, in case, in case TSA loses the net. Don't get the cop. They should want to try it. They should try it. Yeah. So the key fob was in your pocket. Yeah. It must have been in one of my pockets. And it then set the alarm off. Sixteen. When you went through. No, he didn't have it. I didn't have one. Oh, he blamed oh, yeah. oh, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. oh. He said he put it in the tray, but he didn't. He never did. He never did. Uh, could he? Well, he could you I imagine couldn't. I didn't bust, have it. <laughs> you imagine him busting the chops because oh, really? he thought they lost it. They, 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 they were lucky. They were lucky. I didn't bust them back because I had to get the big plate busted. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I can imagine. Can you imagine? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well. I know what you're saying. I got a question for you. You got a little arm patting yourself on the back? <laughs> All you kept saying was three dots That's on the it. lower right hand side. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't, and I told you I couldn't find the damn three dots. <laughs> well, we couldn't see them, but I mean, that's different issue. That's different issue. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Tuesday nights, it's getting up to the city. See the cards across the table. Oh. Yeah. Not not right in front of them, but the, the car yeah. is behind. Because yeah. it's too much of a too much of an angle. The players off. The guys do anyway. Okay. <laughs> Bill and Mark. Why? Bill's one of the straightest faced liars I've ever seen. <laughs> he really is good. At it. Oh, that worries me, considering he gave me an S on this much. No, he would never. <laughs> no, I know. Dude. I just joke. Business he would not. No. And he said, Bill called him uh, yesterday morning and said, no, I'm not feeling real well today. So Andy finds out later, Bill was feeling just fine. He went over to Cleveland Heights to play golf. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but he, they've had a tough year. Yeah, they have. They've been doing the money. Yeah. Yeah. See, I don't agree. That, that, that comes from a bank. I don't, yeah. I don't agree. No, if, you can't, if you can't afford to lose, don't play. Don't play. <laughs> that's, why I don't, that's why I don't play. That's why I don't play. That's why I don't play. That's like when we go on the cruises, we'll go in the casino, yeah. but we'll spend 20 bucks. You know? yeah, it's sure. like, yeah, we yeah. don't spend $500 you know, if you, if you and you expect to lose, to don't go to yeah, the casino. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. What well, you might say is throw away money, yeah, so to speak. Yeah. 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 It's a night out. Yeah. yeah. It's a night out. Three trips to Starbucks. <laughs> With grandkids. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Grandkids, yeah. Exactly. I should have got it for you. I should have my limit. That's what it is. The younger grandkids? Oh, yeah. They like to know. Yeah. 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 No, hard drive is the one, and it's exit seven. But you take exit seven before you see the hard drive. You know, so you need to know. It's not like, oh, there's a hard drive. It's too late. It's too late. It's too late. You pass it. Yes. I had to take 75. 
Thanks, Morty and friends. What a great show. Now we are going to move on to Away a Day and Back Again with Carrie and Paul O'Brien. Carrie and Paul, let's hear what you have to say. Hi, thank you for joining us with Chit Chat News and Reviews. I'm Carrie O'Brien and this is Paul O'Brien. We're going to take you on a couple of trips today, um, especially one particular one, Solomon's Castle. It is... Um, built by Howard Solomon. It is just uh, east of Fort Meade. Um, you can go there, you can visit his workshop. He built things all by hand. Um, the castle itself, as you can see in the picture here, was actually built by um, using printer, uh, metal printer plates from um, a printing company that went out of business. And so he bought the printing plates from the company that went out of business, and he built a castle for him and his wife and his daughter. Um, the castle was uh, actually built in 1929, and um, it has a restaurant. It's called the Moat in the Boat. It has facilities there to do um, a group gatherings or a venue. Paul's going to share with you a little bit about the distance and stuff, and then I'll come back and share with you about the costs. And I'm going to do a little bit of the black and white information to support her on this, but we're talking about Solomon's Castle, which is approximately an hour and 18 minutes to get to and 65 miles away. When we get there, the parking is free. It is handicap friendly, so you can be able to move around with the handicap devices as well. Uh, we suggest that you wear good footwear because if you feel adventurous, there's a little hiking to be had and you can walk the trails and stuff like that. For uh, getting in as an adult, first of all, let me tell you, a senior citizen, 62 and over with ID, they get a, they get a break in the, um, in the cost. It is actually for veterans and 62 and over, $39. That includes the castle the um the grounds it also includes the um howard's encore tour of their garage with antique cars now paul can tell you a little bit about the cars that are in the actual um uh tour for that uh he knows a little bit more about cars than i do so i'll let paul talk to you about that and <clears throat> these are all vintage automobiles that they have on display uh they're very up close and personal you can walk around them uh they have one particular car there that is a model t racer there's only seven of them in existence still. Um, and actually, um, they wanted Jay Leno and a few other people wanted to get together with them with that particular car because it is so rare. Now, when you're walking around in there, talk about the dad jokes. <clears throat> he builds his cars from scratch. He has several cars, and he has one that uh, I wish we had a picture of at the moment, but it's a V8. And it's a car that's built with a V8 can in it, so it's now a V8. Motor car. It has V8 tomato juice. That's what runs it. <laughs> so he is the king of the dad jokes, but that's a separate part of the tour. It is a hay ride, hay ride wagon up to the tour. And once you get in there, the, the gentleman in there is as full of dad jokes as anybody else. Mm -hmm. And he does an excellent presentation. He's been with them since the opening of the, the property. So he's been there a long time. Anyway, we'd like to thank you and hope that you take the time to go to Solomon's Castle. Enjoy it as much as we have. We've gone more than once, and it's been exciting every time we've gone. And again, thank you for joining us with Chit Chat News and Views. Well, thank you, Carrie and Paul. <laughs> Weren't they a hoot? Now get your elbow wax ready for our Shalimar Creek Car Show. Dick's going to come here, and he's going to tell you all the needs you know for the car show. Dick, take it away. The Shalimar Creek Car Show is coming up on February 24th. That's a Saturday. And uh, we are expecting a lot of cars here. What uh, a little bit of history, we started this show a little over five years ago with the uh, Breakfast Boys or the Breakfast Buddies. 
at the seven o'clock table. We, uh, one person by the name of Jim Shover, he came up with the idea that he had one truck, we had no cars, and decided to have a car show for the benefit of wounded warriors and the veterans in need in Lo uh, Lakeland in Polk County. All of our money stays here right in Polk County. The uh, clubs that are coming um, are the Mopar Misfits, the Bartow Corvette Club, uh, Lakeland Cruisers, the Lakeland Corvette Club, Cypress Gardens Corvettes, and Auto, uh, Aub Auburndale um, Classic Cars. There's going to be, we're hoping that this year, um, we're going to be uh, over 120 cars that will be on the property. Uh, this year, we're going to offer the craft ladies um, a table for entry is going to be $10 for the crafters. And uh, we will provide a table for you and uh, chairs that uh, you may uh, have for that $10 entry fee. And we're hoping to get more crafters this year for you. And also remember residents uh, in Shalimar with classic cars, they're going to be able to, as in the past, are going to be able to come also and uh, re receive a trophy. This is a trophy that's come last year. And uh, we give out 18 trophies uh, for uh, honorable mention, and we give out one trophy for best of show. The uh, show is sponsored by local businesses to help pay for our trophies. And we like to acknowledge that the some of the sponsors are Snowbird Heating, uh, JR Golf Carts over here, and AmVets provides a, a money for our sponsors. Murex also supports the show and provides us with a monetary uh, amount and it pays for the trophies and our, our costs. I'd like to make a mention, however, that the public traffic, Shalomar Creek Drive is going to be shut down from uh, Andrews Way all the way up here to the other end of uh, Shalomar Creek uh, Drive. Uh, we request that uh, no one is in that area. There will be public parking and there'll be a shuttle, shuttle service to uh, the, the show itself. If you're a handicapped person, just wait at the end of the uh, car show up here by the clubhouse and they, we have volunteers that will drive you through the show. Uh, we have uh, many, many dollars in cars here that uh, is invested. Some of these cars are over four hundred and five hundred thousand dollars So we appreciate that um, you do not touch the cars. You're welcome to look and take pictures. Uh, also, uh, there is no uh, alcohol in, uh, in the show, show space. So this is an alcohol-free. Uh, and private golf cars are just not uh, included to be able to go through the uh, show area. And uh, anyway, the, uh, throughout the last years, we have provided uh, money to the uh, Veterans Homeless, the Children's Service, uh, Veterans Homeless Children. Uh, we've provided money to, uh, direct in the uh, uh, Lakeland area to the uh, service dog program. So our money goes right here uh, in local uh, charities that we do have and are, we are aware of. This is a rain or shine uh, show, so uh, bring your uh, sunshine with you and hopefully we will uh, not have to have worry about the rain. And we've done this for over five years and this is our fifth year. We're pretty happy about that to keep it going. And uh, we will need, I will post a, a volunteer list on the bulletin board uh, across from the, uh, the golf uh, shop there and uh, please sign up. If you need a shirt uh, like this, everybody who had a shirt last year can uh, wear their same shirt. The shirt does not change. And if you need a shirt, uh, I'll have a list there for you to give me the size. The shirts are $15 this year. So uh, we hope that uh, we can have some new volunteers and uh, I let, will let you know what date uh, we need the shirt order by. So. We look forward to seeing all of you at the uh, Card Glove Show and uh, 
enjoy those beauties out there. And uh, please, no touching and, uh, and no alcohol in uh, golf carts in the show area. So thank you very much. Okay, well, thank you, Dick. And we are off to a great start to the Shalimar Creek Car Show. Thanks to Dick and all his volunteers. We'll see you there. Next up, we're going to do a little bit of our Canadian corner. So we're going to be off to see you and Bob, some of our own Florida Canadian residents. See you there. What are you doing? Megan, what are you doing down there? I'm looking for the Canadian corner. It's corner. not there. It's not that. It's a Canadian coroner. Coroner? <laughs> Hi, I'm Celia Arbuckle, and this is the Canadian Coroner. We're really happy to be starting the inaugural one. And, uh... Yeah, I'm Bob Arbuckle. Yeah. I'm Kevin Carley, and <clears throat> I'm a friend of the Arbuckles. I am happy to be here for this morning. So... Mm -hmm. One more sunny day in Florida. <laughs> we finally got warm, and uh, everybody's pretty happy. Yeah. So we enjoy so many things uh, in Florida. Uh, we've got, we were greeted by actually Rebecca the first day that we got here and uh, the funds never stopped. We've met so many wonderful people. We met uh, the Kylie's at golf. We've done, I put, played pickleball very poor, poorly, but we met some wonderful people there as well. Our neighbors are fantastic. The yoga classes here are super. Joyce and Liz are, oh, yeah. do a fantastic job. I go, and uh, <laughs> other other guys go. So if you're thinking about it, it's uh, co-ed, so it's a lot of fun. And as Bob as Bob said, not only yoga, there's so many things to do at Shalimar Creek. If you're if it's if you're bored here, it's your fault. My wife and I have only been here for two years, and uh, we've been involved in a number of things and terrific people we've met through those activities and. Uh, uh, we really enjoy Shalimar Creek. As I say, we've only been here for two years, and we've got lots to learn yet, but uh, it's a happening place, and it's a wonderful place, so we invite you to come along sometime. Yeah, looking forward to the Valentine's Day dance. That's going to be fun, and we went last year and had a blast, as many of the dances we have done. Um, and we were really thrilled that uh, Kevin joined us today, too, because, you know, you think Canadians, we, we do come here just for a short time, Um it has a lot of impact on us. Um, we get a lot of friends, but one of the things that we are really impressed with this year is Kevin's come here and has made an impact on Florida. So could you talk to us about what you've been doing with the um, bikes? Sure, absolutely. Um, I, I enjoy just being active, and while there's a lot of things at Shalimar Creek to do, um, I, I like to do hands-on work and so on and so forth, and my I was bored one day and I asked my son-in-law, who's a real road road bike enthusiast, you know, I got to find something to do. And he said, well, why don't you start fixing bikes? So I went to a uh, bike shop here in South Lakeland and uh, the truck store and said, you know, I'm interested in learning about bikes. And uh, would you uh, have anything you can tell me about? And he said, well, absolutely. There's a, there's a ministry here in Lakeland with the First Presbyterian Church. And uh, it's called Pedal Power Ministries. And... Uh, they said, if you want to learn how to fix bikes, they would welcome you as a volunteer. So I started a few months ago with them. I go in every Thursday morning and every third Saturday and uh, help them fix up bikes. And the bikes are for our people in our community that uh, can't afford a bike, who are new to our country, uh, immigrant workers, and so on and so forth. And we fix up bikes to them, for them. And uh, last year, the ministry gave away 466 bikes to needy families or needy individuals. And I'm learning about bikes and learning about the community and uh, different ministries here. And I am really excited about it. Uh, matter of fact, the morning uh, before we went home on December 7th, uh, flew home for Christmas, we were putting together a children's bikes for Christmas presents. And that really touched my heart. So mm -hmm. it is an amazing ministry. I'm so glad that we have found it. And uh, the uh, Ted Hogan, who runs the ministry, is just an amazing man and uh, met some great people there, too. So. Well, there's lots to do in uh, Shalimar Creek. There's lots to do outside as well. And uh, you just have to stick your nose out and find out what's going on. So I'm very enthusiastic about uh, Pedal Power Ministries. It's wonderful. You can tell that here we are in sunny Florida under these circumstances. We're very blessed. Mm -hmm. you know, our lives have been touched by uh, you know, God and, and really done wonders for us. And now we don't have to live with the two feet of snow that's in my driveway. <laughs> We've got neighbors clearing it out. <laughs> They're very, very kind. Mm -hmm. We're yes, grateful yes, for them. Think of them, yeah. But you know, it's like 
Kevin, giving back like that is just a wonderful thing. And, you know, we're going to get involved in some respect to other things like that because we're part of this community. Just because we're here for four or five months, it doesn't mean that we're not, you know, invested in it. And we love the people here. And we've been so welcomed. It is it is an absolutely wonderful community. People are so friendly. And as I say, it's, uh, you know, being a 55-plus community, there's still a lot of active people here. And that's something we look yeah. we look for when we're looking for a place to uh, to get a, to buy and to be involved with. So there's lots going on here. Yeah. And absolutely. Well, that's true, because when we actually were touring and looking for things, that was the one thing that we found. We wanted to make sure that people were moving around. So when we came, you saw people biking, walking, playing pickleball, doing everything. So, it, and you even played. It's actually fun. You've even played with the uh, U.S. Uh, pool team. That yeah, yeah, yeah we've yeah. had fun doing that. Yeah, billiards, great, great billiard uh, team here to play. And we uh, on Tuesday nights, it's an awful lot of fun. Nice people, and they're very very helpful, helping to teach people. So that's just the type of community it is. It's really really nice. And we're blessed with these two. We've got uh, Reno and Abby, so they're five and six cockapoo and a golden doodle. And we try to keep them not barking people, but, you know, <laughs> sometimes. We try. But they're so happy to be here, and they're just people, 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 dogs. And uh, it's just wonderful to see how receptive people are to them, and they talk to us. If you want to meet people here, walk a dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And I was just going to say, I've only met Rebecca today, and Rebecca is a is a reflection of the people here in Shalimar because it's for her enthusiasm and her uh, zest to get the information about the, the community out to other people. That's the kind of people you're going to meet here. So I, I thank Rebecca for inviting me today, and uh, it's just a pleasure to be part of this community and, be, and to be promoting it, yeah. for sure. So thanks uh, for having the Canadians on your chit-chat. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks All for right. now. Thanks Bye-bye. Again. Well, thanks, guys. We really appreciate that. Now, Celia and Bob, you guys stay warm in Florida here with us, okay? So that's our Canadian Corner. Next up, let's get an insight on a local restaurant here with Susan Stone. Susan, take it. Hi, my name is Susie Stone, and I'm doing a restaurant review this week. And this week, I went with my friend to the back porch in Lake Alfred. And probably most of you have already been there. I've never been there. And there is a lot of parking. And as soon as you step in the door, there's a paper there. And you take it to your table. And you fill it out. And it has what all they have available. You fill it out. And you put your table number on it. Then you take it back up. And you hand it in. And you pay them. And they bring your lunch to the table in this cute little picnic basket. It is very cute. And when we got there, we looked around. There's inside seating and there's also outside seating. And there's water there. Very nice setting. And I, a couple was sitting there by the water at a table. And I talked to them and they said, they came the day before, and they liked it so much, they came again that day. So it's a place you will want to go to again. And once you're done with your meal, they have a lot of shopping. And it's a very nice place. You would like it very much. Good food and very reasonably priced. And I will definitely go again. All right. Well, thank you, Susan Stone, for that insight on a local restaurant near us. If you guys have a restaurant that you're interested in, just let us know and we can feature that too. Now, we're going to take a trip down memory lane with Aunt Jean. She's going to bring us some memories of her and her family member. This is the family photo of the month. I, for one, my name is Jean Hallball. I'm here to show you a little bit about my husband and myself with door gummers and everything. Uh, we got married on Friday the 13th, which is kind of bad for, for some people, but I thought it was the way of certain marriages that I had to go up from there. <laughs> uh, he retired when he was 55, and we did a lot of traveling and everything after we retired. We went on a lot of bus trips to different jobs. Uh, 
did allow the different states and where one we got into a lot of cruises we did a oh, while I was alive we did 18 cruises and for her 65th birthday we took them to uh, the Mediterranean which I really like and also I would take the job well we got married before he left for Vietnam, he left for Vietnam the day after we were married. And then I didn't see him for for a year. <laughs> but my first year was kind of non existent, you know, and everything. But uh okay, and another thing I wanted to say we were married for fifty four years before he passed. Oh, and when we lived in Glen Rock, I didn't, I'm bragging on this. He was a commander of the American Legion and I was president of the, uh, his post auxiliary and everything. And we, I thought we did a lot for the Legion and he helped get the, uh, sons of the American Legion started again. Well, thanks Aunt Jane for sharing those precious moments with us. We do appreciate that. If you'd like to share a family favorite photo, let us know. And now, I'm feeling a little hungry. How about you? Let's go to Suzanne's Kitchen for another resident expert chef. So Suzanne Driscoll is going to show us one of her favorite dishes. Suzanne? Hi, I'm Suzanne Driscoll. Rebecca has invited me to demonstrate a meal for her and the new um, group that she has. And I thought I would start with making pepper steak. Um, very simple, very simple meal. Um, it basically is um, a type of sirloin steak or any steak at all, it depends. And you could use a more, less expensive, if, there, if there's such a thing, piece of steak where you can um, actually cook it a little bit longer and make it a little bit more tender. Or you could do something that you can fix really quick and it'll still be tender. Um, you're gonna, we're gonna um, add two medium, two medium onions. We're going to add um, tomatoes and we're going to add green pepper. I also at times will use these sweet peppers, which gives it a nice flavor. Um, and sometimes, not all the time, if I have mushrooms, I'll add fresh mushrooms to it as well. So let me start with the, oh, so um, also we have uh, broth that we're going to be making, the sauce, and we're going to make it out of um, the beef bouillon, which my secret is to use this, add a little bit of this. This gives it great flavor um, and soy sauce, okay? We have rice cooking. The um, doesn't have to be with rice, but we do have rice. We're gonna start with a pound and a half of sirloin steak that's approximately a half an inch thick. And we're gonna slice it in um, strips like probably um, bite size, bite size because you have to think about the people that you're that will be eating it. All right, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna cut it in chunks. I've trimmed all the fat off of it and all the gristle off of it. This piece, I think, was a little bit more than a pound and a half, but did you want some of this? <laughs> I'm gonna take some of the gristle off of this. I'm going to add some avocado oil, and we're gonna sear, we're gonna sear this meat.
Again, bite-sized pieces. I have a friend down here, that's why I keep looking down. <laughs> We actually would like this to get brown because we want what we want to do is we want to um, be able to deglaze the pan after we're through frying this and we have everything in here. But while that's cooking, I'm going to start cooking it. Um, cutting it calls for um, two medium onions chopped, and I believe we're going to be giving you the. Um, the recipe so you don't have to be writing this down. So we're going to roughly chop the two medium onions, keep my fingers out of the way. Add a little bit of salt and pepper. Not a whole lot of salt um, right now because the bouillon could be salty. Could be a little bit salty. So we don't want, we can always season it after we get the bouillon in it. I don't know if you can see how this pan, this meat is searing, it's slightly brown. And then I'm going to add the onions to this. And you just want to cook these until they're translucent. Okay, now we're going to add some garlic from when the onions are just about done. A couple more minutes on them. So is this smelling good to you guys? 
given the fact that you haven't eaten all day? <laughs> <laughs> all right. I am using, you can use any garlic that you want. A lot of times what I do is I use um, the um, minced garlic because it's quicker, but then I'll use garlic cloves. But my favorite garlic is elephant garlic. It's a sweeter um, tasting garlic. Has a nice flavor to it. So I am slivering the garlic here or chopping it. I just happen to have this little sliver thing from um, uh, Pampered Chef that I really, really like. And it's slivering the, um, slicing the garlic. And you just want this to cook until it's fragrant. Or you could use the um, garlic press to press it in there. I'm going to put a tad more oil in the center. And then stir it. And then I'm going to turn this down just a little bit because we're going to add the water. Hmm, can you smell that? <laughs> smells so good. Nothing smells better than garlic cooking, you know? Garlic and onions and bacon. Mm. Okay, so then I have our, I'm going to put some soy sauce in here. And I, it actually, I just kind of wing it. I don't like it real strong in soy, so I usually put a couple of tablespoons of soy in here. Um, but you can do it to taste. And I have, um, I've used a combination of the um, beef broth the beef broth, can you see that? And um, this um, better than bouillon. I've used a combination of that, okay? And I've mixed them up, and it's approximately, it's about a cup of water. I tend to make a little bit more because I like it, I like the gravy. So we're going to bring that to a simmer. A lot of times, this is where if I'm using a, um, an inexpensive piece of meat, if, like I said, if there is one, um, like a chuck roast that could be a little bit tough, I'll take this and put it into a crock pot and cook it just like this. And then, it'll, and then I can just turn it off and then turn it back on when I'm ready and just add the last bit of ingredients just for a few seconds, okay? So, <clears throat> okay, so we have the broth in here and it is um, simmering. I'm gonna put, um, I don't have a tight lid for that, but I'm gonna put a, something on top just so that the steam stays in there. And it, while I'm doing that, while that's steaming, <clears throat> I'm gonna cut up the green pepper and the tomatoes. This calls for um, two green pepper, but like I said, I've, in the past, I've also used these little sweet peppers too that you can get. <clears throat> so I'm just going to quarter these. These are Roma tomatoes. You can use any kind of tomatoes that you want. Um, I've used little cherry tomatoes. It's, it's really good too with the nice flavor. I'm 
I'm going to cut a few um, mushrooms to add to it. My dogs pick up the food as I scoop it. Just kidding. <laughs> kind of chunk these. I don't make them real thin because I like I like the um, the the thickness of the um, mushrooms, and you can use as m little as you want, much as you want. Or not use them at all. I don't always have them. I don't always put them in in my pepper steak. I've already washed these, by the way. I've washed all of this stuff, by the way. <laughs> We're gonna do the peppers, and these are gonna be in chunks. So when we go to cook this. It's not going to be soggy. None of these vegetables are going to be soggy. They're going to be they're going to be heated through and you're going to eat them. As soon as they're heated through. So you don't want to add these until the very very last minute. And this calls for two. I just break the tops off of these to use them too. So I'm going to rough chop these just in chunks. This makes a beautiful looking, uh, the presentation of the meal is awesome with all the color in it. Rice is still cooking, it's not done yet. So when we're ready for it, when the rice is ready, then what we can do is, um, we're gonna thicken the broth, which is done with um, cornstarch. So everything's ready to go here. We just have to wait for this to simmer just a little bit more and then we'll be ready. <laughs> and while we're waiting for this to simmer, which is just about ready, I'm going to have a glass of wine with our friends. Clink, cheers! cheers. <laughs> okay, so while, we're, while this is simmering, we're going to add the mushrooms because we don't want them to cook to death. So we're going to add the, all these vegetables are added at the last minute. So we're going to, we got the mushrooms in here that will take a few minutes to cook and then we're going to add the green pepper. The green pepper takes a little bit longer than the tomatoes. All we want to do is just warm the tomatoes. And I'm losing a little bit of broth because it's steaming, so I'm gonna add a little bit more in here because I love gravy, I love this gravy. So we just wanna cook this until the green pepper is a little bit tender. Not completely tender, some people like it where it's a little bit crunchy. I know you do. <laughs> <clears throat> so I'm going to cover this again because I just want it to, um, um, to steam a little bit so that the green pepper um, will cook. 
Okay, so now we have the green pepper, the mushrooms in here and the green peppers. We think the green peppers are tender enough. We're gonna thicken the, um, the sauce. I've got cornstarch and water here, and we're gonna thicken it. Now that when we have this to the thickness that we want, which that looks good, can you see that? Okay, we're going to add the tomatoes, and the tomatoes are just going to heat through. I'm going to turn the heat down just a little bit. Just heat that through just a little bit. And while we're doing that, let me <clears throat> let me scoop up some um, some rice. But while we're doing that, excuse me, <laughs> I'll turn that bread off because I don't want, I'm making some bread to go with it, some rolls, some little garlic knot, um, knot rolls from Aldi's, which is absolutely delicious. <clears throat> and the other thing that, there's a couple different things, because it's full of vegetables, I don't look to have another um, vegetable with this. I've been known as, as burn and serve. I did a pretty good job, huh? So we have the, the rolls. When <clears throat> when the tomatoes are heated, it's ready to eat. Heat them just a little bit longer. I usually serve either a toss salad with it or cottage cheese, a cottage cheese salad. So we are going to spoon out the rice. And then just cover the rice with the beef, the green peppers, mushrooms, And tomatoes. Top it off with chives. And 
and there's your meal. Bon appétit. Wow, was that good or what? Thanks, Suzanne. Now, if you would like to be a chef and be on our show, just let us know. Visit us next month when we have another expert resident chef. Now on to our event specialist, Carol. Carol has a lot of exciting events and thrills going on, so let's go. Welcome back. My name's Carol Bowie, and I'm your event specialist, which just simply means I'm giving you a list of events happening in Shalimar and the surrounding area. Now, at the end of this show, the events I'm talking about and other events that are happening in Shalimar will be listed at the end, so don't go away. Stay to the end. Now, today is February 10th, and listen up, because some of the events I'm going to mention first are happening right now. Case in point, the Valentine's Dance is today tonight so but it's not too late to get a ticket the $15 tickets are available at the door at seven o'clock we're going to celebrate those couples have been married 50 years or more at 7 30 the Deb Marin trio will entertain us until 10 30 with music and there'll be a cash bar available for you uh Monday is a presentation put together by Jenny Ballou and the HOA regarding elder care attorney is coming between 1 and 3 o'clock in the ballroom to talk about power of attorney, medical uh, medical directives, and uh, revocable trust. So that's fr it's free of charge. You go there, you listen. If you want to ask questions, he'll be available for that. So it's Monday, 1 to 3 in the ballroom, free of charge. Now, the 13th is Tuesday. What does that mean? Bingo! Now, the game, st the the game start uh, promptly at 6.30, um, and it's a fun night. You can bring food for your table, bring up a drink from the Caddy Shack. It's just a fun night. And then on Wednesday, this is a donation opportunity. Um, Judy Gard and Tammy Damey are collecting items to donate to the Combi Connection. If you're unfamiliar with that program, the Combi Connection is a nonprofit organization that was started when Hurricane Irma came over Lakeland and left many people homeless. This uh, dedicated resident and her church got together some buses, bused these homeless people, families, to temporary housing. From that, they've gone through and would food distribution, and they provide items to struggling families in Polk County. Now, Shalimar Creek has always been generous uh, donating items, so this is your chance to donate Hy uh, hygiene products, diapers, and non-perishable food. Now, they're going to collect it on Valentine's Day, February 14th, at 47, 4650 Devonwood Court for a, between the hours of 10 and 3. Now, on February 17th, which is a Saturday, is another breakfast club. You get For $1, you get a delicious donut. For one another dollar, you get a bottomless cup of coffee. It's a way to meet people that live here in the community and get to know some of the clubs that are here that you might be interested in joining. Uh, they serve between 8 and 10. If you want the best selection, you better be there by close to 8 o'clock. Uh, also on that same day, which is Saturday, February 17th, is karaoke. Provided music provided by Dick Ray. So get your song. Maybe practice a little bit. And then take your name and your song to Dick on the 17th, and he will set you up. There'll be a cash bar for refreshments. Do you know that we have an, uh, a resident artist here? Her name is Carol Hughes, and once a month she has a sip and paint where you can come. All the, for $25, you get art instruction. All the supply, art supplies are provided, and they have drinks and snacks, and you can take your masterpiece home with you. But it's going to be, what did I say, February 22nd, 
It's not in the ballroom, as it usually is. It's going to be down in the caddy shack, starting from 5.30 to 7.30. So the pictures I've seen on Facebook look like it's a lot of fun. So if you want to participate in that, it's going to be February 22nd. Call Carol Hughes. She's in the directory. And get your reservation for that event. February 23rd, back by popular demand, is Cliff Erickson. He's a Canadian that comes down here and entertains with music, humor, and sing-along, which is my favorite part. Tickets are $12, but if you want to be treated like a VIP and sit right up front, the tickets are $17. Now, the $12 tickets will be sold at the door. February 24th, this is an event outside Shalimar, like three miles away. It's a crab and seafood festival, and it's at the Saddle Creek Park from hmm, 10 to 6. The tickets are $20 at the gate. Do you know that 2024 is a leap year? And so to celebrate, they're going to have an all-you-can-eat breakfast buffet on what day? Let's see. Oh, February 29th, between 8 and 10. Now, you have to buy a ticket. No tickets are sold at the, at the door. It, they're only $8. Go into March a little bit. March 7th is our next potluck. The theme is Italian. Now, if you remember, we just had a potluck for Super Bowl scene. Before that, it was the international food, which is a great big success. If you'd like to participate in the Italian potluck, have your meal or your dish that serves 15 people up in the ballroom by 4.30. Dinner will start around 5 o'clock. They're asking each person that attends to pay $1 for the tableware, the, uh, the utensils, and the beverages that will be provided. March 9th, I gotta look at this again. Our farmer's market that takes place right here in the parking lot of Shalimar, and put together by Chris Kittleberger will be from 9 to noon. There'll be popcorn, baked goods, jewelry, pet pet products. Sometimes there's baked goods. Once in a while, they have a food truck. Now, if it's bad weather, they'll move up into the ballroom. But that's something you can do on a Saturday morning from 9 to 12. On March 16th, the Caddyshack will present its, uh, will serve its St. Patrick's Day dinner of cor corned beef, cabbage, and potatoes. You have to have a reservation. Now, those reservations will be taken starting March 1st in the Caddy Shack. So make sure you get your reservation in so you can have some corned beef and cabbage for St. Patrick's Day. Anyway, that's a lot of talking, even for me. So this is Carol Bowie, your event specialist, signing off until the next time. Bye-bye. Carol! Carol! Hey, what? Come on, help me! Help me! What are you doing? I'm leaving out negativity! Well, let me help you! Wow, is that a mouthful? Thank you, Carol, and thank you for all you do to get those events. That was a lot to carry. Remember, at the end of this show, we'll have a whole line of all the events in our community, and then all the ones that Carol listed, too. We'll also have a copy of the recipe and a picture of it. And, folks... You can tune in next month on March 16th for our next episode. We greatly appreciate all the support and all the positive feedback for Chit Chat News and Views, uh, the Today Show for tomorrow. I'd also like to put out a great thank you to our producers, Luis and Sammy, who spend an, a lot of hours editing and doing a lot of great things for our community. Now I'm going to leave you guys with another little tidbit of information. From Paul and Carrie O'Brien, they have went and done some research for the up-and-coming wonderful Strawberry Festival. So stay tuned for all that information, and I'll see you next month on March 16th. Hi, thank you for joining Paul and I. My name is Carrie O'Brien. This is my husband, Paul O'Brien. We are going to take you on a trip today to the Strawberry Festival if Paul doesn't have to wear strawberries, um, to the Strawberry Festival coming up. It starts on the uh, 29th of February, and it goes to the 10th of March. Um, Paul is going to give you the directions on how to get there and all of that, and then I'm going to tell you all about how, how much it costs and all of the things <clears throat> you can do when you're there. It's lots and lots of fun. So, Paul, if you'll... I'm right. saying it. The dates for this rascal is February 29th through March 10th. It's in Plant City, 
at uh, 303 Berry Fest Place. Imagine that. <clears throat> it's about a 35-minute drive. It's 20 miles. There is parking, $5 per car. I'm going to wear some very comfortable shoes uh, because there is a lot of walking involved. And I'll let her take it from there. Okay, it is handicapped, uh, wheelchair-friendly. So if you have a wheelchair or a scooter, you can get around easy on the thing. The venue is amazing. There's all kinds of activities going on. There's vendors um, with crafts and arts, and there's food galore. And I mean everything from fair food to things you wouldn't even think about having there. And one of the biggest things is the strawberries. You can get strawberry milkshakes, strawberry shortcake, all kinds of neat strawberry stuff. I just want to let you know that they do have every day. The, um, you can enjoy the, the country bluegrass. Um, it plays um, at from 4 to 7 every day. They do have 21 headliners this year. The cost to get in is for adults 13 and up. It's $15. For children 6 to 12, it is $5. For children under 5, it's free. 5 and under is free. They do have a senior discount day. It is March um, March 9th, and you can get your tickets for $10. But even better than that, you can go to Publix and get discount tickets every day. Plant City Strawberry Festival uh, comes with a little bit of information behind it. It runs from December to March every year. That's our picking time. Uh, they plant, they uh, pick from the fields and actually put it right out into the stores. Um, the winter strawberry capital of the world is Plant City. A little bit of information. So buy local. It's really important. Uh, it helps the it helps the growers, and you can't beat the the flavor. It's always much much better. Also, they're going to have a parade. The Grand Parade Day is March 4th. So um, we hope that you enjoy it. Come and have a lot of fun. Uh, eat a lot of strawberries. And Paul's going to uh, show you here a little bit of strawberry dessert that he's making for me. He can have some too if, if, if he's nice and doesn't put rabbit here, ears behind me anymore. Anyway, so I'll let Paul do his strawberry mm. thing. Hey, <clears throat> no sense going to a strawberry festival if you're not going to make use of the strawberries. So I got a quick little thing to put together for you here that uh, give you a little bit of an idea of what you can do with the strawberries. It's not going to be nearly as good as what you're going to get there. But, you know, hey, I got a little bit of Neapolitan ice cream melted down so it's nice and gooey and ooey. And a little extra color. And a little garnish on top. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Here. Enjoy. Oh, they're sweet. <laughs> yum, yum. Sons of coffee's on. Tune in before the morning's gone. Show for tomorrow.